They're everywhere from your favorite sports anime to niche 2D dating simulations that make my feminism leave my body. Today, I will talk about one of my favorite anime this season, Romantic Killer. It's a one-series adaptation of its manga counterpart, and I absolutely loved feeling an excitement for shoujo that I hadn't felt in a long time. Romantic Killer is a story about Notaku high school girl Anzu, who is obsessed with dating simulations, chocolate, and her fluffy companion Momohiki. One day, a self-proclaimed wizard, an odd creature resembling a stress ball, pops into Anzu's room and confiscates her most beloved possessions, her games, chocolate, and cat, telling her that if she does not find a boyfriend, those possessions will never be returned to her. Anzu is very stubborn and true to her anti-hero traits, and so she decides to retaliate against the wizard. She decides to absolutely not fall in love with any of the ikemen thrown at her. Anzu's life follows a very standard otome game, where the male lead targets are handsome ikemen, one a very popular student and the other a childhood friend. Will Anzu end up with her beloved and win back her prized possessions? Will she stand firm with her anti-hero characteristics and resist the handsome 2D men? Who is this wizard and who deployed them to create romantic relationships? Is the one piece real or is the real treasure the journey along the way? Anyways, the series is a fresh take on the traditional reverse harm genre, and it takes an interesting thriller-like twist. We haven't- well, I think we haven't seen many notable reverse harms since Kiss Him, Not Me, and Romantic Killer does an excellent job entertaining you throughout the whole series, but also having PLOT! Can we get much The issue I sometimes have with otome game adaptations or reverse harms in general is that there isn't much plot and usually the story follows a girl deciding which man to end up with. And a great aspect about Romantic Killer is that it takes those traditional lovey-dovey moments in reverse harm that we all love, but it also focuses on the virtues and shortcomings of each character as well as everyone's development. <laughs> Even the wizard gets a great character arc, and without spoiling anything, I will say it does a great job creating suspense when it was least expected, and the ending of the first season was a really interesting cliffhanger. I've been thinking about the factors that distinguish a shoujo anime from being an average yet entertaining piece to being a standout show. Sometimes I want to turn my brain off and simply watch characters fighting and having hype moments and sometimes for romance, I just want to ca watch characters fall in love in the most cliche, predictable manner. <clears throat> And I've realized that I need this baseline entertainment aspect in any anime, regardless of how prestigious or artistic or culturally significant it is. It needs to entertain me to a certain extent. But also, I really appreciate a raw character who has relatable flaws and virtues, and a storyline that isn't just the characters being attracted to each other. A good example of this is Charlotte. The anime definitely has romantic undertones, but it stands out so much because of how well they develop everyone's supernatural abilities and how the main character loses parts of his humanity to preserve everyone else's. I also just really like the weird ass design that the wizard got. This is all to show that Romantic Killer is an extremely entertaining anime and the Ikemen feels filled. This is all to show that Romantic Killer is an extremely entertaining show and the Ikemen fills my heart with joy. So go watch it on Netflix. Thank you so much for subscribing and listening to my rambling. Um, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye! <laughs>